Righto, we're back for a preview of the prelim finals. Prelim? Qualifying? Whatever they are. It's been 10 years, I don't know what they're called. Finals of the semi-finals, the finals before the grand finals. We're previewing prelim, that, Dana's back. The prelim. Pre- it is a prelim? <laughs> okay. The, we're previewing that. Two games to look at. Uh, the review is up. You can catch that earlier. That's up. Hopefully, Danon's closed all his windows so the Wi-Fi doesn't get out tonight and we can um, <laughs> crack into looking at all of this. Uh, da, 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 let's start Friday night where it is the Storm hosting the Roosters at a sold-out Amy Park, which is quite cool. Uh, and for the Storm, no changes as such. Pappenhausen, Walbrick, Howarth, Meany, Coates, Munster, Hughes. Ford pack is Nelson named to start, but there was some... Discussion he might be held off if Spencer Lenu doesn't start. Harry Grant, Josh King, uh, Lauren Catello, back row, Lario, the uh, lock, Wishart Welsh, Kamakameka, McDonald make up the bench. Su- 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 Longo is named in the 22. I imagine it'd be quite tricky for him to get back in to the 17 at this stage. For the Roosters, again, no issues here. Tedesco, two post, Swiley. Manu, Young, Kiri, Sandon, Smith at seven. Wira Hargraves, Connor Watson at nine. Collins, Crichton, Tupanua, Radley. Eventually, Lenny, White, Butcher, and Terrell May wraps up the 17. What's caught your eye in this game? And more importantly, who are you tipping to go through to the grand final? Referee, Grant Atkins. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the forward battle between Nelson and, and Wira Hargraves, I think, is going to be great. Um, since the change of the the final system, we've had uh, twelve twelve lots of finals. This is this is season thirteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, four of those occasions, it ended up one v two. So, you know what, a third of the time, yep, it, it has ended up one v two, and you know we've kind of said it all along that. That that's what we think it is going to to turn out to be. Um, you know, the storm at home with a week off, and arguably, well, it's not even arguably they've been the best side all year. Um, and you you look at that that side, they've been the best when they've been constantly missing players. Um, they're pretty much full strength now at the perfect time of the year. And with about uh, a, a good uh, month-long uh, run of uh, of everyone being fit, at least the key players. Yeah, that's it. Um, some of those key players have had you know two breaks in the last month because they rested those players against the Cowboys as well. Um, it's just you know I I just want it to be a contest at the end of the game. I don't want to see two games like we did last week where you know as I said earlier, it felt like it was they're both over by half time. Um, and I, I, I think the Roosters can do that. They've, yeah, they're really they're missing that halfback. Yeah, I, I think in a way and, it's simplified their game. Know, the fact the if Walker was there, it would be. Pardon? Sorry, you going? You going? Yeah, no, no, I was just asking what, what did you say? Sorry, because as I was chatting at the same time. I I think in a way it simplified their game. I think they went back last week. I just decided they're going to try and be physical. Keep it simple and really just set up through the middle for Teddy, instead of having you know too much Walker or Kiri flash stuff. I think it's just going to try and out muscle whatever team comes up against and them. I, and I think you're right again. It's gonna it's that's going to be have to be the game plan again this week. Yes, it's going to be very 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 similar. Um, like the market's got them a do- Storm dollar thirty favorite, and they're even the favorite at the line dollar uh, eighty four minus nine and a half. Um. So yeah, everything is leaning towards a storm victory. But if the Roosters can complete it like a ninety-five percent, they've got the forwards to stick in the battle. It's just whether the backs and Teddy can can control it. Um, you know, the the point scoring side of things, can they can they keep up with, with the storm? Um because is the storm one of those sides that once they get out to a 12, 18 point lead, you just don't chase them down. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, the, the fact that what, how big's Amy Park? 40 odd thousand, close yes, enough to it? I think it's 40. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to suggest that 35,000 of them are, roost, uh, are, are, are Storm fans. Not even go north of that, but yeah. Like, 
yeah. So it's um it's going to be one one tough ask for the Roosters to to get over the line. Um, but in saying that, I'm not confident like picking Storm thirteen plus. No, I don't. I I think this is a. I think this is the only hope of the two for a close game. Uh, just looking back earlier in the year, yeah. 18 12 storm over roosters back in April, and 24 8 in July was the other time they met this year. They're just sort of bulletproof in Melbourne. Like they, their forwards, I think Sean Blore's fitness, the fact he got fit after that start to the year, and Katoa have just really shored up the physicality in this team. And Nelson coming back, you know, there was question marks here earlier in the year. Their, their forward back's going as well as anyone. They were pretty dominant against the Sharks two weeks back. And they've had a week off, and you look through. If you if you think back to earlier in the year, that the little glitches they had, there was concerns around that how with Meany, uh, the Meany Warbrick combination, well, they fixed that up. Uh, there was some concerns around. Um, well, we mentioned the forward pack, but that that was being shored up. They've got depth off the bench. They've got one of the hottest fourteens in the comp in Wishart. They're sort of bomb proof. There was once upon a time you'd you'd suggest you know Swaley and Manu. May win that battle, but geez, how has been great, and I don't, I don't think those Roosters players have been at their absolute, you know, superstar standout best. Uh, the height's nullified. They can't. While they've got the taller wingers, you'd argue Storm have the better aerial wingers this day, this day and age. Uh, so you know, the, the crossfield kicks you'd think would be shut down by Warbrick and Coates. Pappy's found some form, uh, and that's without any mention the uh, who I assume will be the Daly M Player of the Year. Jerome Hughes. So, and then when it all comes back to it, you've got a, a, a X Factor freak as well at six, which Roosters don't really have. So I, I think it has to almost be a bash up, a 15 minute bash up. I think you'll know if, if Roosters haven't come away with points. And I think it needs to be at least 12 in that first 15. Storm will just ramp up and ramp up and ramp up and, and run away later in the game. I, I, I wouldn't sit here and sit, just say 13 plus. But I I do think it'll be a comfortable one to twelve. I think bashing the door down is the only way to go and try to make the storm chase. And even then, they've got out of jail how many times this year? But you've got to take them out of the comfort zone. They can get a little bit frantic. They have at times, but not not very often. So I think I think the only path to victory is the Roosters trying to just build them out of the game. Yeah, I, I think Atkins refing helps the Roosters because. If they're going to ref it like they did last week, they already know what they're going to be able to get away with, how far they're going to be able to push. Um, I was trying to find – I saw something come up today again on on social media about the storm spine, and I, I wasn't able to check it only because I just don't have the, the ability to do so. But the storm, the storm with that starting spine have only lost if one of them hasn't been able to finish the game. Like they, they're undefeated. This year? If – the four of them played the 80. Wow. Uh, no, no, like since, like that's what I mean. It's going back and that, that's why it's so difficult because Pappy's oh. been injured and Munders, oh, so you know, over, those, over those the years. Those four as but a combination. Wow. As a combination, they've not lost a game if they've finished the game fit. Wow. I'd have to think about that. So I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to fact check it because yeah, it's it just it's way too difficult. Yeah. But it's, um, you just even think back this year alone. Like I can't think of what a game they lost when it was all four of them together. Um, no, the club, Pappy going off injured was one of them. Uh, yeah, yeah. So wow, and, and that's what and that's what made the stat hard. It was like trying to find losses in there, but yeah, yeah, you did, yeah. yeah. so you know, I'm I'm sure some some guy that's got way too much time on his hands was able to. Do all the numbers and someone will have and, it, but uh, show it. But um, yeah, that, that's quite the stat. A couple other stats. Still. But even so, if it, yeah, go. What, no. did, what did you find? I just get on top of that. I'm just reading here. Ten of the last eleven. Storm are basically ten from eleven. The last uh, five years against the Roosters. End of one. Their last three at Amy. Uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, Coates has scored eight tries in his past four games against the Chooks. So every stat you look at it is in favour of uh, the Storm. Yeah, definitely. Do you have a man of the match? Do you have a, a way this will pan out? Um, 
I just think it'll be well every every time it's the storm. I just say Jerome Hughes. He's just in career best form. Um, at the end of the day, it's it's going to be there is a lot of like like much for muchness in this one where they do line up very well across the board, mm. except at the halfback. Yeah, where it's just Hughes is just a mile in front. Um, which is gonna I'm gonna make I feel like that's gonna make him stand out even more. Oh, and I do want to reiterate that, that, but we, you know, you get with Tedesco. I do want to reiterate. I think Teddy runs a clear second in the Dallium this year, and it's been a fantastic. Yeah. Like if you're looking at fullbacks, just just on current form, giving yeah. Teddy that slight, you know, the fullback advantage the other way. If you're going to make the cases, uh, Harry Grant was phenomenal last week, and look, really, you've still got to say the same about Munster as you do about the lineup there at six. And that's it. Angus Crichton's been the best second rower in the comp this year, comfortably. Um, you know, Sua Lee uh, has been very good, even though he's on his way out. Joey Manu, we mentioned the other week, has been a bit of a letdown. But you got like Tupo scored, what is it, fifteen odd tries again this year. Like he's going better than a try every second game. Um, so they've got the attacking weapons and, and everything's there. So uh, you're right. It just needs to be a real simple game plan, complete at 95% plus, and they'll have a chance. But even then, I'm I'm still taking the Storm 1-12. to 12. I agree. You know, Storm 1-12, to 12, I think it I think it'd be a tremendous – I think I wouldn't be shocked if it's 8-4 halftime, but I think that second half, I think it ramps up, it ramps up, ramps up, and last – couple of tries in the last 15 – we we'll just put the storm ahead. I could I could see him come out and blow blow them away again. In if you're going to say that last week was maybe the Roosters bounce back GF effort, but yeah, the minor premiers for a reason. Oh, I, I, and and that's why everyone's saying it, it's it's going to be a yeah. You know, that, that's why everyone's saying it's going to be a Storm Panthers grand final because mm. if both sides won by forty this week, you wouldn't be surprised. Exactly. Look, I. Uh, I think th- if you're saying to, from a betting point of view, I do think 360s overs in my head, but do I want to take it? Not really. So then maybe it's no. not. Anything else we need to keep an eye on or take away from this game, apart from everyone getting uh, through in one piece for the grand final? No, it's, it's going to be a, a boy, a handful of. Um, what is it? Is it like five players on the Roosters lineup that this will be their last match if they lose, or four players or something like uh, that? Well, Re- Tupo's re signed. Swayley's Uli, going. Manu, Manu's Kiri. going. Kiri. Kiri's going. Jared's uh, going. Yeah, Satili. Yes, yeah, so and Satili. Yes, yeah, a bit of a changing of the guard after this. Yeah, you talk about, and we didn't really touch on it um, because of your connectivity issues, but you talk about premiership windows. This is probably the end of the Roosters one, and as we've said, we talked about last week. They've missed their sh- they, I think they've missed their shot. And similar with, I'd say similar with Manly, that I can't imagine them getting better next year. Uh, whether DC hangs around, whatever no, happened there. Uh, and when they're better, yeah, DC, he's in the same boat as Tedesco, where as good as he's playing, another year older, another year on the legs, they're going to get slower. They might have parts of their game that improve over time, but. You know, the one thing you can't teach is speed. And when you start losing that in the key positions, it's going to hurt you um, quite a fair bit. I, I, I don't know if it was last week, but I've de- I know I've definitely said it. I, Trent Robertson's an overrated coach with the, the squads that he's had to not be able to think for however many years it's been. Um, yeah. I, 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 but I think you're right. I, I wouldn't say closed, you know, for two to three years, but I just I don't give him a chance next year. Walker Walker won't be back until late. Yeah, and that's thing they have Chad Townsend or Sandon Smith as one of their halves. Uh, the quality of players they're missing, they're probably going to be one of the big ones in the off season when it comes to looking at purchasing players. Though, at the same time, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I know the death cycle. But oh, we'll worry about November. There's no point in speculating on that, but. It's interesting losing Jared, uh, Tupanua going. 
I wonder if they'd almost think about taking a Campbell Gillard if they get him cheapish. Yeah. Anyway, we'll uh, crack on. We'll so, worry about it in a week's time when we do the. Exactly. We've got yeah. we've got reviews coming, season reviews coming next week, uh, which will be done in person. So there'll be no technical issues apart from um, running out of Great Northern. We've got Saturday night Panthers and Sharks from uh, Accor Stadium with Scott Sorensen named in the 20. Might be the only potential change here. But at the moment, we've got Edwards, Taruva, Tungo, Alamote. Uh, Taruva comes back in, actually. Was he last week? I suppose he was. Um, Tuo, Luai, Cleary, Leota, Kenny. Yeah, it says both of both the one to seven. Yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, Garner, Martin, Yo, Schneider, Smith, Henry, Eisenhuth. And for the Sharks, uh, they're on change as well. Kennedy, Katoa, Ramian. Uh, officially starts this week, came in late edition last time. Iro, Molotalo, Trindle at six, Hines at seven on paper, Rudolph, Braley, Kafusi, Nicaro, Wilton, McGuinness, and Talakai, Williams, Hunt, and Hazelton wrap up the bench. At a call, there'll be a decent crowd because the Panthers fans you'd think will travel. Will um, there be any hope, though, for them? Yeah, sorry, we've got him. And, yeah, well, this stat I saw today. Uh, 229 minutes since the Sharks have actually scored a point against the Panthers, uh, who have won 10, going for a, re- a record 11th straight finals win. Uh, as a year, he's going to break the all-time Panthers appearance record of 243 games, and Penrith are seven of the last eight against the Sharks. Yeah, as I said, any hope? I, I, no. The, uh, I can see Penrith winning this by 20. Possibly more. Um, I just the sharks. I think they did, they completed eighty percent again last week. It was just that the Cowboys were worse, hundred percent, and the Panthers weren't given that opportunity. Um, they, again, they've they they were bruised, bit bruised and battered. Um, they've had the week off. They're fine and. The thing is, if they start the same way they did against the Roosters, the Sharks won't know how to come back from that. If they start that way, and and It'll that was be, close yeah. to the best twenty minutes of footy all year, uh, from a clinical point of view. Oh, exactly. If they start that way against against Melbourne the week later, they probably wrap up the grand final in the first twenty minutes. Like yeah. that was amazing. If, if Penrith start like that, they'll go on the job against the Sharks because the second half won't get any better. Sharks won't chase. Penrith will just ramp up and ramp up the intensity. We saw last week once, probably the worst thing that happened to the Sharks was in the second half was the fact that it just got into that uh, consistent, well, the cycle as they call it now, where there wasn't a break for ages and it just wore the Sharks out for that first 20 minutes of that second half. And I just watched that, that period where the Cowboys were coming for the Sharks and the, the way that middle just imploded. And I thought, well, what's going to happen next to you when it's Fisher-Harris, Liam Martin... Leota and then Yo getting in and digging into the line. They were playing like they had to just, just playing to defend the lead. And yeah. How many times have you seen Penrith just come over the top if you're playing to just defend the lead? Exactly. But I think they'll guess it. And, and that, that's what yeah. I mean. Like the, the Sharks need to be up by 20 with four to go. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, like the Penrith are just going to come home. I can see Yo having a massive game here. Like, like I said, once that middle opens up, he's going to. I wouldn't be surprised if he scores a try in the second half, but he'll he, he'll play that usual. He'll be the one that crabs across, digs in the line, sets Cleary up, mm-hmm. he'll either float out the back to Edwards or do whatever he has to do and just make Cleary look like the superstar he is. But I think, yeah, we'll be close to man of the match in this game, and I think this is an easy, easy 13-plus tip for me. Most of the back five might even get on the board here. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I was similar to you, but I actually think Mitch Kenny's going to have a blinder for very mm-hmm. the, the same reason. Yeah. Just chewing him apart in the middle. And, but he's one of those guys that, that doesn't get spoken about as much. Um, but like and I can see him scoring tackles. a try, setting up one or two off the... F- yeah, I, I think he's going to just have a really good game. Um, and, and this is where I think it's going to help Penrith the week after. Because if they're they're the side that's if they've got this wrapped up by the 60th minute, they will cruise to the last 20 because they know how to. 
hundred percent. And again, that's probably why Schneider's in a team. Give um, an option to rest almost any of any of that yeah. back line if they need to. Yeah. The only way, um, the only way I can... We might wrap this up. Uh Danon's pretty pretty sure that we're on the same page in the fact that it's going to be a comprehensive victory to the Sharks. Look, as we've said in the past, they're one of the few teams that uh, run as hard as anyone in the comp. Their back five is the key to this game, I think, trying to outmuscle what goes on there. And just uh, outmuscle that, that back five for Penrith. That's the best hope they've got. I think Ramey and Iro Molotalo trying to just uh, spread the ball and... Score points out wide, like we saw a bit, get Trudnell in the game, but I, I can't see it happening. I think the defence is too solid. I think they, we're going to see the Penrith-Melbourne Grand Final, I suppose we've all predicted for the last six weeks, where we'll have a proper preview of that game and also a review of what does happen here. Thanks for everyone's patience and apologies for uh, what's happened with some of the internet connectivity today. We'll be at the pub for the rest of the season, so shouldn't have too many issues. And if Dana is back right now... Get him to say bye, mate. Um, there we are. Hello. Yeah, thanks, bro. I'm about to, uh, sorry about tonight. Uh, That's right. You're, you're live. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Control. Quick, quickly throw in. Uh, how do you think sharks can possibly get away with this? Um, Cleary has to go down injured. Is the only <laughs> okay. way. Okay. Because even though they've got Schneider on the, even though they've got Schneider on the bench, they they don't seem to have. He he can't fill out the same game plan. Um, we've seen it this year that when Cleary's gone off that it just how much it affects them. Yeah. And I think we've said it's Luai is much better when he can come in knowing he's playing seven from the start, just sees that way. I, I don't think he's going to be exactly. He's more than capable of doing it, but it, yeah. I've just noticed those couple of games he's had to everyone else around it. The pieces don't quite jigsaw together as well as they do when they come into the game prepared for that. And he's got it again, so we're going to take this home. Thank you, everyone. Uh, check out Show Us Your Tips. Big weekend of racing ahead, and we will come back and review it all. Season review as well. Award show, lots to come. It's been a rough couple of weeks. We're going to get caught up on all of that soon. Take care, and we'll talk soon.